This is the NCFE Level 1 Functional Skills Maths uh, Practice Paper and we're going to start with the non-calculator section. Activity 1. Mugs of tea. Mel has a small transport cafe. She goes to a cash and carry to buy things she needs. She sees this special offer on tea bags. Special offer, 1,200 tea bags, £24 per box. Buy one box and get one half price. And a question which we've got down here is calculate one half of 12. Well, one half of 12, you might know what half of, uh, sorry, one half of 24, I've given the answer away. Uh, you might know the answer straight away. Or we can say, well, one half of 12 means one half times 12, which is the same as one times 24, which is 24. And then over two means divided by two. So we can do that using the bus stop method. Two goes into two once, and two goes into four twice. So we get an answer of 12. Part B. How much will it cost for two boxes of these tea bags? Okay, well, we saw that it costs £24 per box, but buy one box and get one half price. So, the first box will be £24, but the second box is half price, and we've already worked out what half of 24 is, which is 12. So we just need to add these two together. 4 and 2 is 6, 2 and 1 is 3. So we've got 36 pounds. One C. Mel buys two boxes of tea bags with this with the special offer. Calculate the price per tea bag. Give your answer in pence. Okay, well we know that two boxes cost us thirty-six pounds, and there were one thousand two hundred tea bags in each box. Let's just double check that. Yeah, one thousand two hundred. So if we're buying two boxes. We're going to have, so £36 is for 2 times 1,200, which is 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2. So £36 is for 2,400 tea bags. Right, so if we want to know how much it is for one tea bag, but well, we're going to need to divide the price by the number of tea bags. So the first thing we can do is, well, instead of having this as pounds, let's turn that into pence. So 36 pounds. If we want to turn it into pence, we've got 100 pence in the pound, so we're just going to put two zeros on the end. Okay, and you'll see in a moment why we've turned it into pence. That's because when we do the amount divided by the number of tea bags, well, now we've got a big number divided by a big number, so we can cancel one zero with one zero and another zero with another zero. We end up with 36 divided by 24. Now, let's write that as a fraction. Because if we write it like this, it's easy to see that, well, we can simplify this. Okay. Now, they're both even numbers, so we could divide them by 2. Uh, and that's fine, and then you could simplify it in a few steps. Or you might see, well, actually, 36 and 24, they're both in the 12 times table. So let's divide them both by 12. So 36, so we've got 12, 24, 36. So we get 3. And 24... Well, that's 12, 24, so that's two 12s. So we get a 3 over 2, which we can turn into a mixed number. So 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over. So we get 1 and a half, 
or 1.5 pence. And part D. Let's go down here. That's right. A mug of tea contains about 20 millilitres of milk. How many 20 millilitre servings are there in a one litre bottle of milk? Yeah, well, one litre is 1,000 millilitres. Okay, so what we want to do, if we want to know how many 20 millilitres there are, are in one litre, we're going to do 1,000 divided by 20. And I think we've got zeros, we can cancel a zero here with a zero there, which means we end up with 100 divided by 2, or half of 100. Well, let's do it bus stop method again. 100 divided by 2. 2 into 1 doesn't go. 2 into 10 goes 5 times. And 2 into 0 is 0. So we end up with... 57. Then part E. Five kilograms of sugar costs £3.20 and contains 1,000 teaspoons of sugar. How much in pence does one teaspoon of sugar cost? Okay, so let's, because it's in pence, Let's turn our pounds into pence again. So £3.20 in pence. We're going to multiply it by 100 because there's 100 pence in the pound. So that means we're going to move our decimal point twice to the right. So we get 320p. Now, we've got 1,000 teaspoons of sugar. So we're going to take our 320 and divide it by 1,000. So if we're dividing by a 1,000, that means we're going to move our decimal point three places to the left. Now, at the moment, you might say, I haven't got a decimal point. Well, if we haven't got one, that means it must be sort of invisible at the end. So we need to move it three times. So one, two, three. So we're going to end up with 0 0.32. We can pop that. And part F. Milk costs 50p per litre. For each mug of tea, Mel uses one tea bag, one teaspoon of sugar, and 20 millilitres of milk. What is the total cost for the tea, sugar, and milk for one mug of tea? Give your answer in pence. Well, our one tea bag. We worked this out in an earlier question, didn't we? So one tea bag was 1.5 pence. 1.5p. Uh, one teaspoon of sugar. How much was that? Well, we work that out just up here. So that was 0 0.32p. So 0 0.32. And then we want 20 milliliter of milk. Well, for the milk, we know that it was, if we look back to... Uh, in part D, we had that there were 50 servings in a bottle of milk, okay, or in a litre of milk. So if it's 50p for one litre, well, it's going to be 50p, so this is the milk, it's going to be 50p for 50 servings, so one serving must be 1p. Okay. So one, we can put it as 0.00p. 
So now we just need to add these all together. So what we can do, these two are to two decimal places. This is only to one. So what I'm going to do is, I'll get rid of the P. I'm going to put a zero in there. Okay, and the reason for doing that is that now we've got something to add together. So zero plus two plus zero is two. Five plus three plus zero is eight. Put a decimal point in. One plus zero plus one is two. So we've got 2.82 amps. And then part G. Including staff and overheads, the total cost of making one mug of tea is 80p. Mel charges 55% more for a mug of tea than it costs to make. How much does Mel charge for a mug of tea in the cafe? Give your answer in pounds. Right, well, let's start off. So uh, the total cost is 80p. So we're sort of saying 100% is 80p. She charges 55% more. So we want to work out 55%. Well, let's work out 50% first of all, because I know that 50% is half. And half of 80p is 40p. We want 55%, so we want an extra 5% now. Well, 5, you can see 5 is like 50 without the 0. So in other words, we're dividing by 10. So if we divide 40p by 10, it's just going to be 4p. So if it's 55% more, we want to add up the cost of 55% and add it on to the original. So 0 plus 0 plus 4 is 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. So it's 124p. But they want the answer in pounds. So we're going to need to divide it by 100. So again, if you think of our decimal point as being at the end of the number, we're going to move it twice. So we're going to get one pound 24 and that's the end of the non-calculator section. This is the NCFE Level 1 Functional Skills Maths Practice Paper and this is the calculator section. Caring for Reptiles Zach is doing an apprenticeship in animal care and management. He's working as an assistant at a, as a reptile centre Zach learns about how to look after reptiles. And we've got this table here with habitat, either water or land, the animal type, their maximum length, the optimal temperatures, and their humidity that they like. What's the maximum length of a box terrapin in millimetres? Okay, well, there's only one mark for this, so we need to do this one. Uh, it should be reasonably straightforward. Well, box terrapin here, the maximum length is 15 centimetres, but they want that in millimetres. So I know that there are 10 millimetres in one centimetre. So if we've got 15 centimetres, we're going to times 10 by 15. And I know if I'm multiplying by 10, I'm just going to add a zero one. So we're going to get 150 millimetres. Part B. The age of a young garter snake can be estimated using this rule. Length of snake in centimetres, then you subtract 12, then you divide by 15, and you get the age of the snake in years. An adult garter snake is about 72 centimetres long. What age is a garter snake when its length is 72 centimetres? So what we need to do is to take this and put it into our formula. So the length of the snake in centimetres is 72. Then we subtract 12. This is the calculator section, but I'm going to do this manually. We get 60. Then we divide by 15. So we're saying 60 divided by 15. Well, you can use a calculator for this one, but I know that's going to give me 4. And that is our final answer four years.
to see. It is important that reptiles are given the correct diet. The calcium, and this is our sort of ratio symbol, so the calcium to phosphorus weight ratio in their food should be close to 2 to 1. The table shows the weight in milligrams of calcium and phosphorus in one scoop of food. So in watermelon, the ratio is 36 milligrams of calcium to 9 milligrams of phosphorus. And in cauliflower, the ratio is 160 grams of calcium to 80 grams of phosphorus. Which food has the better calcium to phosphorus ratio for reptiles? And by better, we're being told, remember... Uh, that we want it close to two to one. Okay. Well, for watermelon, the ratio is 36 to nine, calcium to phosphorus. So we can simplify this. So we want to look at uh, what's a common factor of 36 and nine. Well, I know that 36 is in the nine times table and obviously, 9 is also a, a, a factor of, or multiple of 9. So let's divide both by 9. 36 divided by 9. Well, we've got 9, 18, 27, 36. So 9 goes into 36 four times, and 9 goes into 9 once. So the ratio simplifies to 4 to 1. Let's have a look at cauliflower. And the ratio for cauliflower is 160 to 80. So we want to see if we can simplify this down. Well, we can cancel the zeros straight away. Right, what number goes into 16 and 8? Well, I know that 8 goes into 16, and obviously 8 goes into 8. So 8 goes into 16, 8, 16, that's twice. And 8 goes into 8 once. These are both even numbers, so you could have simplified them by dividing both by 2 and then doing the same again uh, because it was, they'd still be even numbers. But we get down to 2 to 1. It says uh, the calcium phosphorus weight ratio in their food should be close to 2 to 1. Well, for cauliflower, it's exactly 2 to 1. So the best food for them is going to be cauliflower. A customer needs to buy a tank for his snake. Zach has this information about the size of tanks. So, if your snake's between 0 and 30 centimetres, then the minimum floor area for a snake is 300 centimetres squared. If the snake's between 31 and 40 centimetres, the minimum floor area for one snake is 400 centimetres squared, and so on for the different lengths of snake. The reptile centre sells these five sizes of tanks. So we've got mini, small, medium, large and extra large. These are the dimensions, the length and the width. And these are the costs. Uh, the question down here, which is the cheapest tank the customer should buy for one snake, which is 45 centimetres long? Show you're working. Well, if it's 45 centimetres long, that's going to fall into this category, 41 to 50. So we're going to need a minimum of 600 centimetres squared. Okay, right. So we want to find out which of our tanks is going to give us uh, at least 600 metres squared for the area. And we're going to want the cheapest one. So the way to find that out is, well, we know that the area... Uh, and this is going to be of a rectangle because we're talking about the floor area. So if we think of it like this is the floor area. That's our length. That's our width. So area is length times width. So we can use the calculator for this. So the first one, we've got 18 centimetres by 11, that's 
198 and this is going to be centimeters squared well that's not going to be big enough okay so let's look at the next one we've got 23 times 15.5 that's 356.5 centimeters squared still not big enough so we look at the next one so 31 times 19.5 we get 604.5. Well, that's more than 600. So we're going to go with that one. It might also fit into these two, but uh, we want the cheapest tank. So it's going to be this one, because we know that it won't fit into either of those two. So which is the cheapest tank? Well, it is medium. E. Another customer already has a terrapin tank. She wants advice on how many terrapins to buy. When her tank is filled, the water surface area is 600 centimetres squared. So that's going to be this bit on top, like sort of the top rectangle. That's the water surface area. Terrapins need a water surface area of 1,900 centimetres squared for two terrapins then an additional 300 centimetres squared for each additional terrapin. What's the maximum number of terrapins Zach should advise the customer to buy? Right. Well, so we start off with 6,000 centimetres squared. If we take away 1,900, because we know that that's going to be enough for two terrapins, if we take that away... 6,000 minus 1,900, we're left with 4,100 centimetres squared. Okay, so that's what we've got to use to fill it up with more than our first two. Each additional one needs 300 centimetres squared. So let's see how many 300 centimetres squared we can fit into the 4,100 centimetres squares that we've got left. So, 4,100 divided by 300, and we get 13.66666. But we can't have 0.66 of a terrapin. That would be a bit weird and cruel. So, we're going to have to have an extra 13 terrapins. But remember, that's in addition to the first two terrapins that need 1,900. So, we're going to add our 2 to the 13. And we get 15 terrapins. Two F. At college, Zach learns about snakes. He reads this data about the lengths of snakes found in one area. So, uh, length of snakes. So, for snakes between 20 and 24 centimeters. There were seven of them. Uh, there were 11 snakes that were found between 25 and 29 centimetres long. 13 snakes between 13 and 34 centimetres, and, and so on. The bar chart shows this data, but one bar is incomplete. Draw the bar to the correct height on the chart and label it. So here's our chart. Length of snakes found in one area. So 20 to 24, we can see we've got th this line here. And if we read this across, if this is 5 and that's 10. Then it must be 1 square for each. It would be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there were 7 snakes between 20 and 24. And that agrees with up there. If we look at the next one, 25 to 29, we get across. There were 11 snakes, which agrees with up here. This is our missing one, the third group. And what were the length of those? Well, it was 30 to 34. Put that in. And how high does the bar need to go? Well, 13. Right, we want to make our bar the same width as all of the others. So how many squares have we got? One, two, three, four, five. 
and how many squares between each one? One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to start here and we want to go up 13. Well, this line here is 10, 11, 12, 13. One line there, and we need it to be five squares wide. So one, two, three, four, five. And we want to go up to 13 again. It's the same height as the other one. And then we can just draw the top on there. Okay. And that's it. We don't need to colour the bar in. That's all we need to do. Two G. The car class tutor has provided some snakes for the students to handle. Five of the snakes are green, and four are brown. Zach is first to choose and picks a snake at random. What's the probability that he picks a brown snake? So with probability, always good to do it as a fraction, and always good to start with the denominator. So how many snakes have we got to choose from in total? Well. We've got five which are green and four and nine, so in total we've got nine snakes. Now we're only interested in the probability that he picks a brown snake, and there's four of those. So four over nine, and that's it. Activity three, cycling trip. Asha lives in Nottingham. She's planning a cycle trip in Holland. This is 3A. Asha planned the trip in two stages. First stage, take the train from Nottingham to Harwich and then take the ferry from Harwich to the Hook of Holland. This is part of the train timetable from Nottingham to Harwich. So, uh, the 1702 leaves Nottingham at that time and arrives at Harwich at 21.17. We've got the time of the next train and the next one and the next one. And the question is, how many hours does the 1928 train from Nottingham, so that's, this is 1928, so it's this one we're interested in, take to get to Harwich if it runs to time? Give your answer as a mixed number. Right, okay. So, we're starting at 1928, and we want to get to 2258. Well, I'm going to add on an hour each time. So if we add on one hour, it will get to 2028. Okay. Oh, where is it? This one here. Okay. So we're not there yet. So let's add on another hour. That would take us to 2128. Right. Still not there. I'm trying to get the hours the same. So add another hour and we get up to 2228. Okay, well, we've got there on the hours, but we're not there on the minutes yet. So how many minutes to get from 28 to 58? Well, we can do 58 minus 28. So we need another 30 minutes. And that will get us to 2258. Okay, so we've got three hours 30 minutes, but they should give your answer as a mixed number. Okay, well, so if you think a mixed number means the whole number, so the three for the hours, and then the minutes, well, there's 30 minutes in an hour, so it'd be 30 over 60, but I know that I can simplify the, the zeros, and three over six, I know I can simplify that further, Three goes into three once, three goes into six twice, so we end up with three and a half hours. Three B. The return train fare from Nottingham to Harwich is £158.80. Asha has a student rail card which gives her 30% off. How much will Asha pay for her return ticket? Okay, uh, I'm going to do this in two ways. The first way I'm going to do this is say, well, let's work out what 30% of this is and then take it away. 
So 30% would be 30 divided by 100, and then multiply it by 158 pounds 80. And if we do all of that, we get 47 pounds 64. And then if we take that away, so 158 80 minus 4764, we get 111 pounds and 16p. Now, if you want an alternative method, or if it's 30% off, well, that means that if we're starting with a hundred, this is a hundred percent, thirty percent off would leave seventy percent. So we can go straight for working out what seventy percent of one hundred and fifty-eight pounds eighty is. So seventy divided by a hundred, or you might know that seventy over a hundred or seventy percent is the same as zero point seven. Then multiply that by one hundred and fifty-eight pounds eighty, and that gets us straight to 111 pounds 16. Okay, so this is a slightly quicker method because we don't have to take the number away afterwards. We go straight for 70%. But either way is fine. Both give the same answer. Okay, part C. Asher plans to cycle from the Hook of Holland to Amsterdam. Her map has a scale of one centimeter to eight kilometers. So that means every one centimetre on the map means eight kilometres in real life. The straight line distance between the Hook of Holland and Amsterdam is 70 kilometres. What is the measurement between these two places on Asher's map? Give your answer in millimetres. OK, well, 70 kilometres on the map. We know that there are eight kilometres for every one centimetre on the map. So if we do the 70 divided by 8, that will tell us how many centimetres we're going to have. So 70 divided by 8, and we get 8.75, and that's centimetres. Now, we want the answer in millimetres. Well, I know there are 10 millimetres in one centimetre. So that means I want to multiply 8.75 by 10. And you can use your calculator, or you can just say, well, if I'm multiplying by 10, I'm going to move that decimal point one place to the right. So we get 87.5 millimetres. Okay, 3D. Asha will spend two days in Amsterdam and then cycle back to catch the ferry at the Hook of Holland. The road distance between the two places is about 40% longer than the straight line distance. Estimate the actual road distance Asha will cycle in total. Okay, right, so it's 40% longer than the straight line distance. And we know the straight line distance was 70 kilometres. So let's work out, we'll do this a slightly longer way, but probably makes more sense. So we'll work out 40%, so 40 over 100, of the straight line distance, which was 70 kilometres. So 40% of 70 gives us 28 kilometres. And it's 40% longer, so we want to add on the original... 70 okay. uh, and that's going to give us 98 kilometers now that's for one way she wants the distance that she will cycle in total she's, she's got to go there and come back so we're going to multiply that by 2 so let's add on the 70 to get the 98 and multiply it by 2 and we get 196 Kilometers. Okay. If you wanted to do this in a slightly more direct way, you could say, well, if, if it's 40% longer, 
that means that what we want is 140%. So we could do 140 over 100 times 70. And you can do it on the calculator and check, and that will get you straight to 98. And then you still need to multiply it by 2 to get your final answer. Three E. Ashley needs to buy a pair of cycle bags for her trip. She reads an article which says that for a cycling holiday, the cycle bags need to have a capacity of at least 20 litres each. One litre is the same as 1,000 centimetres cubed. Asher sees some cycle bags which each have these dimensions. Height 42 centimetres, width 32 centimetres, depth 17 centimetres. Okay. Uh, so let, let's draw a little picture of that. So our height is 42 centimetres, our width is 32, and the depth So this distance is 17. Okay, the cycle bags are roughly cuboid in shape, so that's how I know I can draw it like this. And uh, let's shift that up. Yeah. Are these, and these are all centimeters. Okay, but remember, if you are doing a sketch, you don't need to be 100% exact, so you don't have to always write the measurements on, but it's usually safer too, so we don't get them mixed up. Uh, are these cycle bags large enough? Well, we know that they need to be 20 litres in capacity each. So let's work out the capacity or the volume of this shape. Okay, so uh, if we want the volume, we need to multiply the height by the width by the depth. Or you might know it as width times length times height. Or, but basically, you're multiplying the three different dimensions together. Okay, so we're going to want to multiply 42 times 32 times 17. So let's do that and see what we get. And we get 22,848, and that's centimetres cubed. Now we're told that one litre is the same as 1,000 centimetres cubed. So if we want to know how many litres, we need to divide it by 1,000. So I've still got my answer there. Divide it by 1,000. And we get 22.848 litres. And that's more than 20. So, yes, these are large enough. The empty cycle bags weigh 0 0.76 kilograms each. Asha says two of these cycle bags together will weigh less than 1.6 kilograms. Is Asha correct? Well, let's see. So 0 0.76 times 2. And we get 1.52. Well, that's less than 1.6. So yes, quite a nice straightforward one there. 3G. Three, three the cycle bags that Asher buys weigh 0 0.85 kilograms each. Asher fills one bag with clothes. The clothes weigh 473 grams. How much does the cycle bag containing the clothes weigh? Right, well, we've got the bag in kilograms and we've got the clothes in grams. So it hasn't said what units they want the answer in. So you, basically, we need to get them in both the same. Doesn't matter which way you do it. Uh, let's turn the cycle bags into grams. So I know that there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. So if we do 0 0.85 times 1,000, we get 
we get 850 grams. That's for the bag. Okay. Uh, if we then add on the clothes, 473 that is, we get three. Obviously you can use your calculator for this. Uh, so that is 1,323 grams. If we wanted to do it in kilograms instead, so this is alternative, so all, well then what we can do is we can take the 473 and divide it by 1,000. So 473 divided by 1,000. That gives me 0 0.473 kilograms. If I add on the 0 0.85 kilograms, I get 1.323 kilograms. So either answer is fine. I said they, they haven't specified if we need to give it in kilograms or grams. So either one. And 3H. Ash's instructions say when you leave the ferry port, go east. Asher is cycling north. How many degrees clockwise does she need to turn to cycle east? Right, well, let's draw our compass points. So we always have north pointing up. Uh, so if we know that's north, where do all the other directions go? Well, my way for remembering it is never eat shredded wheat. You might know a different way of remembering it. Basically, north and south are always opposite. We've got east on the right, west on the left. But as I say, never eat shredded wheat. That's my way. So she's circling north. She wants to go east. And how many degrees clockwise? So we're going to be turning this way. So this is the angle we want. Well, I know that there are 360 degrees in a full circle. This is a quarter of a circle. But I also know that actually that's a right angle. And a right angle is 90 degrees. Activity 4. Sleeping rough. Every year, local authorities in England estimate how many people are sleeping rough in their area. The estimates for England over the last few years are shown in this table. So for 2011, the estimate was there were 2,181 people sleeping rough. In 2012, it was 2,309. 2013, it was 2,414. And so on. The data is represented in this line graph. The axes are incomplete. Complete the line graph. Right, so we've got two missing boxes. So these are the labels. So one's going to be year, and one's going to be estimated number of people sleeping rough in England. Well, these numbers are increasing at a different amount. So these must represent the number of people sleeping rough. So I'm just going to put number of people. And that means along the bottom, these must be the years. In fact, I'm going to label the years down here because I think this will be a bit easier because we know that we're starting with 2011. So my first cross here must be 2011. And then the next one must be 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and finally 2016, because that's our last one. Now we've got to fit on the numbers up here for the number of people. Okay, so we know that we're starting at 2,181 and we go up to 4,134. So we've got to work out the scale on here. Well, the natural way would, if we're starting at zero, would be if that's 1,000, 2,000, 
3,000, 4,000. And that would seem to make sense because the last one's 4,100. So we can put those on. And when you're labeling the axes, you always want to go at least as high as the biggest number. The biggest number is more than 4,000, so we're going to have to go up to 5,000 there. And I think that's everything we need. We'll put our years on here. Four B. Between two thousand and fourteen and two thousand and seventeen, the number of people sleeping rough increased by seventy five percent. Write this percentage as a fraction in its simplest form. Seventy five percent means seventy five over a hundred. Um, so we can simplify this. Well, if the number ends in five, I know that five goes into it. And if a number ends in zero, I know that 10 and also five goes into it. So I could divide both by five, but also I know that these, these numbers, 75, I know 25 goes into 75. 25, 50, 75. So it goes in three times. And 25 goes into 100, 25, 50, 75, 100, four times. So I know that's equal to three quarters. Let's say you could divide both by five first and, and simplify it and then do another step afterwards. Either way, you're going to end up with three quarters. Uh, alternatively, if you've got a scientific calculator, if you type 75 divided by 100 equals into your calculator, Either it will show up as three quarters straight away, or if it shows it as a decimal, 0 0.75, you can press your S to D button, which is sort of top row of the, no, bottom row of the scientific calculator bits over on the right, and that will turn it into a fraction. But this is, this is probably more straightforward. Okay. Calculate 75% of 2,744. Give your answer to the nearest 100. Okay, so 75%, so that means 75 out of 100. Of always means times. So 75 divided by 100 times 2,744. So 75 divided by 100 times 2,744. And we get 2,000. And 58. Now, they told us to give your answer to the nearest hundred. Well, these are my hundreds, so I look at the number after it, which is a five. So if it's five or more, we round up. So this is going to round to 2,100. And we can put that in there. D. A charity asks people to donate 40p a day to sponsor rooms for people sleeping rough. The charity hopes to raise £1 million a year through these donations. How many people would have to donate 40p a day to raise at least £1 million for the charity in a year? Use the conversion 365 days equals one year. Right, so if they're doing 40p a day... Well, I'm going to turn 40p into, this is all in pounds. So 40p would be 0 0.40 pounds. Now, if you do, they're doing that every day, so multiply it by 365, in one year, one person donating this would donate 146 pounds. So, if we want to raise a million pounds, how many of these donations are they going to need? So, we want one million divided by 146. Oh, one million, that's six zeros, divided by 146. And that gives me 
five. Well, if I just take 6,849 people, that's not going to be enough. It's going to be just short. So we're going to have to go up to the nearest whole person. So 6,850 people. A community group raises money to help people who sleep rough. Volunteers pack shopping bags at a local supermarket and ask shoppers for donations. The table shows the number of volunteers who packed bags on 32 Saturdays in one year. Use the... And so these are all the different values we've got. Okay, So uh, one volunteer... Number of volunteers. So uh, on one Saturday there were four volunteers working. On another Saturday there were five volunteers. Another day there were two. Use the data to complete this frequency table. So, how many days were there zero volunteers? Well, we've got one zero, so they've got a four. How many days were there four volunteers? Sorry, how many days were there one volunteer? We've got one, two. Three, four. So that's why we've got a four in there. So how many days were there two volunteers? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can put a six in there. How many days were there three volunteers? One, two, three, four, five. And how many days were there four volunteers? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's check that they all add up to 32, which is our total. So one and four is five, at six is 11, at five is 16, at eight is 24, at seven is 31, and one is 32. Okay. So you can use a calculator to check those as well. Four F. Over these days, the volunteers collected £6,224. What was the mean amount of money collected each Saturday? Well, 6224 And we saw from a previous question, there were 32 Saturdays. Now, it doesn't matter the fact that there was one Saturday where there were no volunteers. There were still 32 Saturdays in total. So 6224 divided by 32 gives us £194. We've got it 0 0.5, but because it's money, we need to add the zero to make it £194.50. We'll put that there. Four g The amounts of money collected each Saturday had a range of £53. The most money collected in a day was £220. What was the least amount of money collected in a day? Well, the range is the maximum or the biggest minus the minimum. So what we're saying is that the most, the maximum, was 220. We don't know what the minimum was, but we do know that the range was 53 pounds. So 220 minus something gives us 53. That's the same as saying, well, 220 minus 53 must give us the minimum. So if we do that, we get 167 pounds. And finally, Abdul is a member of the community group. On a Saturday, he either packs shopping bags or he takes part in another activity. The table shows the probability of him taking part in each activity. So bag packing is probability of 0 0.35, playing football 0 0.5, uh, playing computer games probability of 0 0.11, and shopping probability of 0 0.04. Obviously he doesn't like shopping much. Which activity is Abdul most likely to take part in? Explain how you decide. Well, it's going to be the biggest number 
which is football. Okay, so football, it is the biggest number or probability. And that's the end of the paper. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, do look on my YouTube channel for all my other papers as well. The best way to do it is to go to the uh, home screen and then look at playlists and you can look for either level one or level two papers and you'll find them all in there. Uh, and also if you subscribe, you'll get notified as I add more papers as well. So please do like and comment and hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much.